Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video of myself, Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So to kick things off today, my friends, we have something rather interesting from 3D Mark and their Port Royal Benchmark. Now I'm sure you don't need reminding, but just in case you do, the Port Royal Benchmark is 3D Mark's ray tracing benchmark. So it is the only benchmark for just ray tracing other than that built-in Windows one which is a bit weird and not really what you think of when you think of the word benchmark. Now it has been updated today to support DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling which NVIDIA was very proud to show off when of course they showed off the Turing cards earlier last year. So we also have a new driver out for GeForce of course but we also have a separate blog post from NVIDIA, and that is the focus of this particular topic, as they have compared benchmarks results for the various RTX cards at 1440p with DLSS enabled or disabled, basically showing us the performance impact that turning it on actually has, at least according to NVIDIA. So they shared with us two performance graphs, the first of which is just showing us performance versus on or off, and then the percentage gain in the second one. So for the first one, again this is the Port Royal benchmark running at 1440p and for the rest of the system it is using an i7 8086k clocked at 5.2 gigahertz, 32 gigs of RAM and of course the latest drivers. So we see some significant upgrades in terms of performance. So for the RTX 26E, let's start there. For DLSS on, we see it coming in just underneath 30 frames per second. Unfortunately, no exact figures there. And with it off, it's coming in just under 20. So again, you see an increase of 10 frames per second there. And for the 2070, with it on, we see it just over 30 and just over 20 with it off. For the 2080, it runs at 40 frames a second um, with it on, and with it off, it comes in just under 30 frames a second. And with the 2080 tie, we see it coming at roughly, I would, I would say, about 52, 53 frames per second with it on, and then with it off, it's coming in just below 40. So in some cases there, we are seeing increases of just over 10 frames per second, but let's take a look at the second graph, shall we, and where they see the performance gains in percentage. So again, let's begin things here with the RTX 2060, as we see a 50% performance gain on that one. For the 2070, it's 45%. And 2080, it looks to be about 43%. And for the 2080 tie, we see, I'd say, 42% there. Now obviously these benchmarks have not been verified by myself or anyone else at least at the time of recording that I have seen, so do take them with a pinch of salt as of course they come with in, from NVIDIA, but it is interesting to see these numbers nonetheless because NVIDIA have been talking a lot about how much DLSS helps in performance when it comes to ray tracing. And while we're not seeing it shoot up to like plus 100 frames per second or anything silly like that, we are still seeing a significant increase in performance for this particular benchmark. But again, do take with a pinch of salt, but still very interesting to see nonetheless. So with all that said, let's move to the next topic, which is actually regarding another F processor in the ninth generation from Intel. Now I discussed these particular line of processors just yesterday because as I'd said then, unfortunately, it does not have a integrated graphics unit, but we still have basically the same price, and in some cases more than the same price, than the same version of it in the ninth generation. So basically you're paying more for less, because you're not getting integrated graphics, but you're paying more for it versus just say a 9900K or, or whatever. And now, at least for the i5 9400F, it turns out that they are not using Stim, that being the solder, which was obviously very much celebrated for the higher end of the ninth generation. And you guessed it, we are seeing the return of the Intel toothpaste for at least this particular 
variation. Now, this information comes to us thanks to Momo Mo on you uh, on the on the Twitter. So Momo US, should I say, which is what I almost said there. And what they have actually done is they've delidded um, the 9400F. And what you can actually see is not only do we see the dreaded thermal paste here instead of stim. We also see that the iGPU is physically present on the 9400F, it's just been disabled. So they've not even physically removed the iGPU, they have just turned it off. Which, I guess, somehow makes it worse, I'm not really sure why, it just does. Um, so overall the F series is not looking all that brilliant, to be honest. But it is entirely possible that this is just the case for the lower end of the F series. We might see solder still being in place, for example, the 9900KF, which is the uh, processor I discussed yesterday. But, at least for this one, no stim in sight, my friends, unfortunately. So... Next topic we have is actually something mobile related as we have some benchmarks for the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Or to be more specific, we've got a Exynos 9820 benchmark that has been put through the ringer on Geekbench. And in this particular test, it is finding its home in the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. So, what do we actually see here? Well... What we have is a single core score of 3248 and a multi core score of 7999. Now, that is interesting because it is a little bit lower than some other benchmarks that we actually have for the 9820, which shows a single core score of 4472 and a multi core score of 10387. And we don't only have these particular benchmarks, we also have a bit of a teaser for the S10 that basically it just exists to remind you that we're going to be seeing this lineup launch later on this month. So of course that will be the real test for this particular smartphone as that's when it's really going to be benchmarked and we're really going to see what it's capable of in various situations. We of course have had a few leaks but we should naturally wait for more to get the full picture but it's not going to be too long to wait until we get at least see the launch of this particular smartphone. Now let's finish things off shall we with a bit of gaming news and this is actually regarding the whole Metro Exodus debacle. Now I'm sure you have undoubtedly heard all about this as it was recently revealed that Metro Exodus is going to have a timed exclusivity period on the Epic Games Store which has not gone down well at all and this wasn't really helped by a post made by a 4A Games developer on the Gamer Native forums. Now if you somehow missed the post I will read it out to you but it is Google translated from what I think is Russian so you know Keep in mind, this is obviously not their exact words, but they said, quote, Consider the situation deeper. Someone says that they will crap on the Exodus games and the previous games in the series. It will make the world better. They will put greedy developers in their place. To this, I can answer that in a pinch. If at all, the PC players announce a boycott of Metro, then the next Metro, if it does, is definitely not on PC. Better or worse, decide for yourself. I personally feel sorry for the loyal fans, yes, but my assessment of the work done personally by me and my friends and colleagues will not change this. I firmly know that almost everyone who pours this dirt on the net is also incapable of a bit of what we have done and hopefully do more. And that means they have no idea what they are talking about. So basically, long short of that post is he's making a threat, essentially, that if the game is boycotted or review bombed or whatever, then the next game is not going to be on the PC. But we actually have a bit of an update. I'm not here to just discuss that. No, no, no. We do have a bit of a statement here from the publisher 4A Games who made this post on the official Metro Facebook page. And it reads, quote, The recent decision to move Metro Exodus from Steam to the Epic Games Store was made by Cock Media slash Deep Silver, Dilp Silver alone. The recent comments made by a member of the 4A Games development team do not reflect Deep Silver's or 4A Games' view on the future of the franchise. They do reflect the hurt and disappointment of a passionate individual, who has seen what was previously nothing but positive goodwill towards his work, turn to controversy due to a business decision that he had no control over. We respectfully ask that any and all valid feedback over this decision is directed at Cult Media slash Deep Silver and not the developers at 4A Games. The future release strategy of the Metro series lies with Cult Media slash Deep Silver. Our decision to partner with Epic Games was based on the goal of investing in the future of the series and our development partner at 4A Games. We have every intention of continuing this franchise and a PC version will always be at the heart of our plans. 
And to be honest, I would actually consider that a very reasonable statement to make. You know, asking they're not asking for the criticism to stop. They're just asking it to be directed in the correct place because they are very much correct that the developers, regardless of whether or not they should have made that post, which you know, arguably they shouldn't have done, but they were obviously venting, are only human at the end of the day. Um, regardless of all that, though, the developer, regardless of who they are or what they've said, they have literally nothing to do with the decision that it's on Epic. And I can't blame them for being a little frustrated and hurt for being like, you know, why am I getting all this criticism and hate for something I literally have no control over? So direct the ire where it's deserved, I guess. But obviously do it in a constructive way. Like, the gaming community can be very passionate. Let's just put it that way. But there's nothing wrong with criticising something, especially like this, you know, the, the topic of PC exclusivity is something that doesn't really sit well with me either, uh, to be honest, especially when the Epic Games Store does need some work, especially in terms of the account security and pricing uh, across various regions and all that sort of stuff. There is definitely criticisms to be had. There is a way to express them constructively. And there also is a correct person or people to direct them towards. So... so Personally, I would say this Facebook page is more than fair enough, but that's just me. The original post, mm, not so much. I can understand a, a frustration because they're only human, but still basically threatening to say, hey, look, this game isn't going to be on PC if you do this. That's understandably upset people, and they probably should have said that part at least. If it wasn't for that part, this post probably wouldn't have got all that much traction, but it has, and here we are. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, do hit me up with your thoughts and opinions on everything I've discussed here today, especially this most recent topic, because it is obviously quite a divisive one. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.